What is going on, everybody? I know. What a shocker. We have not watched Silence of the Lambs. Thanks so much for joining us. I am Jabby Kuei, joined by Steph Sabra. Hello. What up, brah? I'm scared. I'm not scared. I am uncomfortable <laughs> with myself and my potential reaction to this movie. So, uh, if you guys haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, vote this up, let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And uh, if you're watching this on Patreon or memberships, thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're unclear as to what the hell the Patreon membership thing is, that I'm explaining this all out of order. If you want to watch the whole movie with us, no cuts, no interruptions, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash jabbykoi, or become a member of this channel. You'll get access to our full uncut reaction, because if you watch this on YouTube, you gotta to see a cut down version of a reaction, because, you know, piracy, copyright claims, all that stuff, we gotta make sure we are following the law. The law. I am the law! I always wanted to do that. Whoa! I guess that would be the fastest way to get off. I wonder if that was on purpose. Yeah. There's a move like that in uh, Mission Impossible Tom Cruise did where he went over a fence and flipped. I was oh. like, is that a... Crawford wants to see you in his office. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I don't know what... Like where he came from. <laughs> yeah, well, it was just the look. Yeah. Like, what was that about? Okay. Mm. Hilarious. Who are they? <laughs> I didn't realize how small she was. Yeah. Gosh, I could not do this job. No. Yeah. Oh, Grody Melody. Oh my God. That's too much. Oh yeah, this is a can. Is this the cannibal one? We're just getting started. Oh jeez. We're interviewing all the serial killers now in custody for a psychobehavioral profile. I want you to go after him again today in the asylum. And who's the subject? The psychiatrist Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal the cannibal. Hmm. Dr. Chilton at the asylum will go over all the physical procedures used with him. Do not deviate from them for any reason whatsoever. And you're to tell him nothing personal, Starlink. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Hmm. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. You know, we get a lot of detectives here, but I must say I can't ever remember one as attractive. Oh, God. Oh, he is creepy. Okay, I was thinking creepy. Right, <laughs> right. On the afternoon of July 8, 1981, he complained of chest pains and was taken to the dispensary. His mouthpiece and restraints were removed for an EKG. When the nurse leaned over him, he did this to her. The doctors managed to reset her jaw, more or less, save one of her eyes. His pulse never got above 85. What? Even when he ate her tongue. Ew. Yeah. Uh, what? When she's finished, bring her out. Shout out to the focus puller on those shots, man. This is on film. And it was like doing complicated moving shots before they had all the tech that they have today. Look great. I'm Barney. He told you, don't get near the glass. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Clarice Starling. Mm -hmm. I've seen him so much in so many movies. I'll be watching. You'll do fine. She's brave. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, God. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? I am, yes. May I see your credentials? Certainly. Closer, please. Oh, Lord. This dude. Whoa. What did Miggs say to you? He hissed at you. What did he say? He said, I can smell your cunt. I thought he said that. Oh. I myself cannot. You use of your skin cream. Jack Crawford must be very busy indeed if he is recruiting help from the student body. Busy hunting that new one, Buffalo Bill. What a naughty boy he is. Do you know why he's called Buffalo Bill? Please tell me. Well, it started as a bad joke in Kansas City homicide. They said, this one likes to skin his humps. Why do you think he removes their skins, Agent Starling? Throw me with your acumen. Most serial killers keep some sort of trophies from their victims. I didn't. No. No, you ate yours. You send that through now. The acting is so good. It's crazy. I mean, I get why he won. Right. 
He's also got like a very small window to work with because the camera's so tight. He has to do everything right here. Oh, Agent Starling, you think you can dissect me with this blunt little tool? I, I thought that your knowledge... You're so ambitious, aren't you? Do you know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rube. You know how quickly the boys found you. All those tedious, sticky fumblings in the back seats of cars while you could only dream of getting out, getting anywhere, getting all the way to the empty Oh, damn. Uh, why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? Maybe you're frightened. Ooh! Uh, 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 uh. Yes. I bit my wrist so I can die. <laughs> Oh my god. Agent Stalling! Agent Stalling! I would not have had that happen to you this courtesy is unspeakably ugly to me. Then do this test for me. No, but I will make you happy. I'll give you a chance for what you love most. And what is that, Doc? Advancement, of course. Listen carefully. Look deep within yourself, Terry Stalling. Go seek out Miss Moffat, an old patient of mine. M-O-F-E-T. Go Doctor. now. I don't think Mix could manage again quite so soon, even though he is crazy. Go now! That was nasty. That was disgusting. I think that's throw up in my throat. Oh my God. <laughs> oh God. I don't think 10 showers would be enough. No. Starling? Sir? Miggs is dead. How? The orderly heard Lecter whispering to him all afternoon and Miggs crying. They found him at bed check. He'd swallowed his own tongue. Oh! <gasps> I thought the yourself reference was uh, too hokey for Lecter, so I figured he's from Baltimore, and I looked in the phone book, and there's a yourself storage facility right outside of downtown Baltimore, sir. Mm. Mm. Very perceptive. Oh. Oh, smart. Nice thinking, Clarice. Totally. God, what's on the other side of this I'm door? S- if this door should fall down or <laughs> anything else, uh, <laughs> this is the number for our Baltimore field office. <laughs> now, they know that you're with me. You call them if anything should happen. Yes, Miss. <laughs> oh, this lady. Ugh, too much brave. Oh, what? <laughs> I am still scarred from that dude throwing his, his stuff at her. Like, that's, it's just like, it's in my rote memory. Like, damn, that's so messed up. Like, how could you do that? They're all missing something, huh? Arms or heads. Or... Ooh, oh, oh. Oh, oh gosh, Grody, that's not right. Oh no. Oh, let's go right back to him. Dr. Lecter, whose head is in that bottle? Why don't you ask me about Buffalo Bill? Well, do you know something? I might if I saw the case file. You could get that for me. Why don't we talk about Miss Moffat? You wanted me to find him. His real name is Benjamin Raspell, a former patient of mine. I did not kill him, I assure you. Merely tucked him away very much as I found him after he'd missed three appointments. Jack Crawford is helping your career, isn't he? Apparently he likes you and you like him too. Do you think Jack Crawford wants you sexually? True, he is much older, but do you think he visualizes scenarios, exchanges? Oh, my. Tell me who decapitated your patient, doctor. Good things to those who wait. Ooh. I've waited, Clarice, but how long can you and old Jackie boy wait? Our little Billy must already be searching for that next special lady. My brain is firing on all cylinders with this movie. Between, like, the acting, the way it's shot, the story, and how engaging it is. Totally. Like, there's so much going on. Uh oh. Oh, God. Every woman's nightmare. Uh, she's just chilling, rocking out. Oh, I thought there was a guy behind her. 
Me too. <laughs> nope. You don't always have to be a good Samaritan. He's got it. I think he's not even trying. Come on. No. He's got it. He, yeah. He's not. He, he can just force that in. Go on. Can oh, I help you with that? Oh, lady. Would you? Sure. I got it this far. I just can't get it up in the truck. So, here. Let's grab this. Oh. Okay. Good. Now you're going to get. <laughs> get in the truck, and, and I want to push it all the way up. Don't. Oh, my I gosh. I really appreciate it. Thank Girl. You. Thank you. Why would you ever. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. That's great. Okay. Hey. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. Keeps them alive for three days. We don't know why. There's no evidence of for physical abuse prior to death. All the mutilation you see there is post-mortem. Three days. Then he shoots them, skins them, and dumps them. Each body in a different river. The water leaves us no trace evidence of any kind. Uh. Oh, Sheriff, uh, this type of sex crime has certain aspects I just as soon discuss in private. You know what I mean? Is this what it's like? Yeah. Is this what it feels like every day at the gym? <laughs> You're right. The gym is. Is she checking to see if someone, like the killer, would come? Oh, yeah. There's like, just watching movies like this. I, I heard something about killers like to show up to these kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. She's triggered. <laughs> what the hell? Right. What is this for? To not spell the body, maybe. They did, they did a really good job of establishing what she's up against with the elevator scene. Yeah. You know, the disparity totally. between her and the other guys. Because it's like this constant, it's a constant running theme in this. Two of her fingernails are broken off and there's... There's dirt or grit under them. It looks like she's tried to claw her way through something. Ray, get pictures of her teeth. We'll fax them for missing persons. Right. Woo! Oh, man, I got oh, oh, gosh. God, I didn't eat before this. She's got something in her throat. Her body comes out of the water. But lots of times there's like leaves and things in the mouth. Oh my goodness. This is so messed up, man. What is that? Butterfly? That's a bug cocoon. Oh my gosh. There's no way that could get way down in there like that. Oh my gosh. Unless somebody shoved it in there. It's a signature? She'll be easier to print when we turn her over. Lamar, will you give me a hand with this? Yes, sir, I will. Oh gosh, please put on a glove. Okay. Ooh, Jack. What do you make of these? Hmm. Different configuration than the other victim. Victim skin removed, this time in two large diamond-shaped sections above the buttocks. Still eight exit wound level with the second or the third thoracic vertebrae, approximately six inches from the right shoulder blade. When I, I told the sheriff we shouldn't talk in front of a woman, it really burned you, didn't it? It was just smoke, darling. I had to get rid of him. Cops look at you to see how to act. Matters. Point taken. How do you sleep, dude? How do you sleep? Would you, with what you just, oh my God. How do you take a nap? Where the heck did this come from? Practically mush. It was found behind the soft pallet of a murder victim. The body was in the Elk River in West Virginia. You mean this is like a clue from a real murder case? Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, nerds are the best. Let's check morphology. Jesus, everything's just so disgusting in this uh, movie. Uh. <laughs> Meet Mr. Acherontius Sticks. 
better known to his friends as the Death's Head Moth. That's a moth, not a butterfly. They only live in Asia. Asia? In this country, they'd have to be specially raised from imported eggs. Uh, somebody grew this guy, fed him honey and nightshade, kept him warm. Somebody loved him. I guess it says something about the film that, like, it's as old as it is, it still, like, has an effect on you, you know? Right. It stands the test of time. It really does, and it's disturbing. One week of the year, you get to leave the hospital and go here. Plum Island. Every day of that week, you may walk on the beach. You may swim in the ocean for up to one hour. Copy of the Buffalo Bill case file. Copy of the senator's offer. Non-negotiable and final. Catherine Martin dies. You get nothing. She had an object deliberately inserted into her throat. Is it a butterfly? Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. He's tried to be a lot of things, I expect. There are three major centers for transsexual surgery. Johns Hopkins, the University of Minnesota, and Columbus Medical Center. If Billy had applied for sex reassignment at one or all of them and been rejected. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. Mr. My family will pay cash. Whatever ransom you're asking for, they'll pay. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, he says it. Yeah. I was like, what is he talking about? If you let me go, I won't. I won't press charges, I promise. See, my mom is a real important woman. I, I guess you already... Ugh. Place the lotion in the basket. I want to see my mom. You still think you're gonna walk on some beach and see the birdies? <laughs> no, I don't oh think God. so. This guy's a jerk. There never was a deal with Senator Martin, but there is now. I designed it. Of course, I worked in a few conditions for my own benefit as well. Who is Buffalo Bill? His first name is Lewis. After the rest of the senator himself, but only in Tennessee. And I have a few conditions of my own. What an idiot. Jack, Hannibal Lecter is being transferred to Memphis. How would he get the pen? Sign right here will have us a legal transfer. Uh oh. Spaghetti O. Here, sir, use mine. How did he grab it? Oh my god. Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Lecter, I brought an affidavit guaranteeing your new rights. You want to read it before I sign. Five for ten, strongly built, about 180 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes pale blue. He'd be about 35 now. He said he lived in Philadelphia, but may have lied. Jesus. Love your suit. <laughs> tell you. Love your suit. You do know the rules, ma'am? Yes, Lieutenant Boyle, I've questioned him before. He has a pen somewhere. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. You were 10 years old. You went to live with cousins on a sheep and horse ranch in Montana. And one morning, I just ran away. Not just, Clarice. What set you off? You started at what time? Early, still dark. Then something woke you, didn't it? Was it a dream? What was it? I heard a strange noise. What was it? Screaming. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs. And they were screaming. And you ran away? First I tried to free them. I, I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. They just stood there, confused. They wouldn't run. But you could, and you did, didn't you? Yes. I took one lamb, and I ran away as fast as I could. Where were you going, Clary? I don't know. I didn't have any food, any water, and it was very cold. Do you think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lambs? I don't know. 
Dr. Chilton, I presume. I think you know each other. It's your turn, Doctor. Out. Tell me his name. Sorry, ma'am, I've got orders. I'd put you on a plane. Brave Clarice. You will let me know when those lambs stop screaming, won't you? Tell me his name, Doctor. Your case file. Oh, God, girl, you are... Jeez, he is... They are both actors. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. The challenge of conveying everything with the frame right. like this is crazy. Son of a bitch demanded a second dinner. Lamb chops, extra rare. And what he wants for breakfast... Damn thing, zoo. <laughs> oh. Oh. Are you and you are, Sergeant Pembry? Oh my gosh. What's gonna happen? They're gonna handcuff him and he's gonna get out of it. He's gonna, he's gonna um, pick the lock. Oh my gosh. I, I'm surprised they don't have another guy in there to keep a gun trained on him. Have their guns out right now. Oh man, this poor guy. He's respectful too. You guys. Oh, attention. Oh. <gasps> no. Goodness. How do you guys not have backup? Ready when you are, Sergeant Pembry. He's just taking his sweet time, too. Oh, my goodness. It stopped. Seal off a 10 block radius. Give me the SWAT team and an ambulance double quick. We're going up. I would wear a face mask, you guys. Like these guys are not equipped for what they are dealing with. Oh! oh, what? Oh God! Oh my God! Ugh. Nasty. Oh my god. He's alive. Get a hold of him or you can feel his hands, son. Talk to him. What do I say? It's Jim Pemmery now. Talk to him, damn it. Breathing in and out. That's it. You're doing a good oh. job. Oh, you, you look real good there. See the face? Yeah, you look. Wait, what? Is that him? Ready? Ready? The whole swap. Let's, Let's go. It's not good enough. Did he switch faces with him? Uh, something like that. That's what it looks like. He's on two. What the hell? Oh my goodness. How did he have the strength? <sighs> What a brilliant misdirection. Wow. No movement. Fire, we're coming into the car. We're opening the hatch. Oh, yay, yay. No, my God, I saw a glimpse of it. That was nasty. Oh. It's unknown. We've got grand mal seizure activity, but he's post-dictal now. Uh, the vital signs are good. Pressure is 130 
over nine. Oh my god. We got him on lactated ringers running and uh and the uh, patient is on ten <gasps> Oh. They found the ambulance in a parking garage at Memphis Airport. Crew was dead. He killed a tourist, too. Got his clothes, cash. By now, he could be anywhere. That girl's fine. God damn. <laughs> Lecter said everything we need to catch him with is right here on these pages. Only I can't. Dr. Lecter said a lot of things. He's here, Ardelia. Maybe he's killing, gonna kill him. Oh, you're right, huh? Jesus. Oh, is that from her back? Or one of their body parts. She left the interview okay. She never come home. Her bedroom's how she left it. Upstairs, door to the left. The other girl had a cat, too. What the hell? I'm like trying to put it together. Me I don't too. I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> like I see familiar things like the mannequin and the ballerina yeah. thing. He's making himself a woman's suit, Mr. Crawford, out of real women. And he and he can sew this guy. He's he's very skilled. Starling, Starling, we know who he is and where he is. We're on our way right now. I need you to link him to the Vimal girl before he's indicted. See what you can dredge up in Belvedere. Yes, sir, you bet. I'll do my best. It's gonna be like speed where it's a misdirect and the house blows up. Oh God! I want this girl to stay Thanks alive. Scraps, asshole! I got a better idea. Good for you. I'm trying to figure something out. Uh. Come and get it, pretty girl. Oh. oh. Oh, the stress. I really want this girl to be alive. Jeez. Uh, what about cockroaches to me? I don't think this is the right house. Hey, don't you hurt my dog! Don't you make me hurt your dog! And you don't know what pain is! My stomach is in knots! <laughs> like, <gasps> yeah, the tension. Oh. 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 Oh my gosh, please, 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 can we save this girl? Well, that doesn't mean it's the same house. That's true. It could be linked, you know. Oh, never mind. We're going in. Oh! <gasps> Sorry to bother you. I'm looking for Mrs. Lippman's family. No, Lippmans don't live here anymore. Uh, excuse me, sir. Um, I really need to speak with you. Oh, shit. Well, what's the problem, officer? Well, I'm investigating the death of Frederica Bimmel. Oh, my God, oh, my God you guys. There's no one here, Jack. And Mrs. Lippman had a son, though. Maybe he could help you. I got, I got his card in here someplace. Do so you want to come in while I look for it? May I? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yo, the misdirect on that was... It was crazy. Stellar. Did you... Take over this place after Mrs. Lippman died, is that right? I bought this house, uh, two years ago. Did she leave any records, any business records, tax forms, uh, list of employees? Turn around, Garley. Uh, Sam, has the FBI learned something? The police around here don't seem to have the first clue. Oh my god, you 
guys, this is simply too much. Check your back, remember you learned that in class. Uh. Mm, the stress. This movie, you guys, holy moly. Catherine Martin! Yes! FBI! You're safe! You're alright, Catherine. Where is he? Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Catherine, you gotta be quiet now. Shut that dog up! I can't, girl. I can't. Catherine. I'm gonna get you out of there, but right now, you listen to me. I've gotta leave this room. I'll be right back. Run! Maybe don't grunt as loud when you when you draw your gun. Oh, what the hell? Oh. Oh my god. Oh, dude. Don't turn around. I, I, I feel like I'm dying. Oh, what it graced her face. Oh. My. God, the tension was so, like. That uh, was ugh. one of the most tense scenes I've ever seen in my life. She's transformed. The symbolism. Yeah, right. uh -huh. Very good. Clarice M. Starling. Congratulations. God, that tension was so much. Like, it was nauseating. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, God. Starling. Wow, Clarice. Have the lambs stopped screaming? Where are you, Dr. Lecter? I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Oh. Is it the psychiatrist? Yeah. Oh, boy. That was such a damn good movie. That was unbelievable. Wow. That held up really, really well. That was stressful. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. I'm just so astounded at how good the acting is. I mean, I understand, you know, we've heard about it for years, right? But just to see how much is done in this very contained space, it's or confined space, mm -hmm. it's that's really hard. It's a lot easier to move around and gesticulate and use your body to express yourself, but to have to contain everything here takes so much skill and restraint that's like one of the most difficult things like even Achara had to lecture me about it because I would do like theatrical auditions and she's like stillness is your friend it's hard to stay still because you're just like you know what I mean yeah um and so to convey all so much nuance it was remarkable like even the little things when he turned away and it's like this really tight shot and just like the little blinks and whatever like when he closes his eyes and you see that he's like absorbing the information and it's affecting him a particular way. I felt all of it. Kudos to the uh, uh, AC, to the focus puller, because they're doing some remarkable stuff. This is on film. So everything is just sort of like gauged with like, uh, with your perception and you measure it obviously, but you don't have the tech, you didn't have the tech back then you, you have now to like right. make sure you can see everything's in focus as you're pulling the, whatever that thing is. And so like there were some instances where the focus was not quite perfect, but like for the most part, it was like spot on, especially with all the moving and whatnot. What I was saying earlier was like back then, you know, because of stuff like that, you'd want to, you'd want to have uh, 
uh, long depth of field. Like right now we're shooting at f4 on this camera. So if I move forward or back, you don't really see that it's out of focus. Both Steph and I are in focus. But if we're at like f1.8 or something, I don't know what the aperture was here. It's like then like if I move this much or if I move this much when the focus is here, I can go easily out of focus. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of moments like that in here where it's like the focus was like on the eye to the point like if they turned, this eye was in focus and this eye was out of focus. So the, sh the depth of field was super shallow, which is like not something you see a lot from movies back then. It was very intimate. Like all these like POV shots of the characters looking at each other, you're just like tight on their faces as they're expressing all of these things. It's like uncomfortably intimate. I feel like it was one of those films where this everything was in like theme mm -hmm. of what it was trying to portray, which is kind of like the psychology of a human. Yeah, yeah. And like both in the dialogue and the story, the case and the characters, mm -hmm. even though those were like separate entities in a lot of the ways, it was all connected into this like look into sexuality and our past and our present. Mm -hmm. Interesting seeing the eye through the eyes of the F, of her, the F Jodie Foster's character and him, Hannibal Lecter, yeah. and us trying to figure out this case, but also being like, how is everything connected? And yet it is yeah. still, yeah. it was just fascinating. Yeah, I think what made Hannibal Lecter so frightening was just how smart he was. Right. It's like when you have a smart, you, you want to have smart characters in a movie and both of our leads in this film were very smart characters and is very well written. And you felt the growth and the journey of Jodie Foster over the course of the film. Like you felt Clarice evolve through each chapter of the story. As I was watching this, I'm like, I gotta watch this again. Like, I wanna study this movie because there's just so much going on from every level, like technically speaking and acting wise and story and uh, uh, every single, it's like firing on all cylinders in the best way possible. 1990s, so this is 33 years old, is it? No, hold on, 2000, 2010, 20, 30, yeah, 33 mm -hmm. years old and it still holds up quite well. I mean, it was still making us uncomfortable and feel knots in our stomach. You know, because sometimes you watch movies that are from like, years ago and you're like, eh, it looks kind of fake. You feel like the time that it was released in. And so for me, like, despite its age, it's just a very, very well-made film with strong characters, well-written characters, and the music and the sound, like you pointed out the sound design of the film. I didn't think about that. Uh, and it, it is, like the sound design is very, very, very well done. Cause you feel so immersed right. in everything happening. It's eerie and it also feels like investigative. And yeah. it just, that you really do get that POV from multiple characters, specifically Jodie Foster's character. Yeah. And like seeing how the world gazes at her and how she views the world mm -hmm. and how that like changes throughout. And it's interesting how it is so timeless because serial killers don't really, or serial killers, right? Some of them have different methods but it's just such a scary thing in itself yeah. and they all have their own motives that most of us don't ever understand because yeah. they don't give proper interviews so even on that just hook alone we all want to know like what drove ted bundy what, right. all these things and you don't really get to know but this specific one you kind of did understand from the view of this serial killer and I liked how even back then now we have a whole different understanding on trans people mm -hmm. and sexuality but even then it feels like they towed a line that felt still mod like relevant and mm -hmm. to the, it wasn't like offensive or so egregiously wrong because we didn't understand it in the 90s his Hannibal Lecter's psychological debrief of what it means to be transvestite mm -hmm. and this character it was just incredible that that it was in the 90s and it still feels like that could have been today yeah no absolutely Absolutely. And, and um, on Hannibal Lecter, I think that we built a very strange relationship as the audience yeah. with that character because it's one of those things where he's, a, you know, he's an awful guy, but there's a part of you that's like, but I don't want him to get caught. You know, I want him to get out and I don't want him to get caught, even though I know he's an awful, awful human being. It's a very strange relationship that the filmmakers and writers were able to help you build with this character and, you know, by extension, uh, Jodie Foster as well. You feel a way about him, even though he should should stay in prison because he's a very dangerous character or dangerous person. Yeah, because his yeah. choices of killing seem always calculated, yeah. right? Like he doesn't want to kill Jody's character because he says the world's better with her in it. Yeah. And he's going after the psychiatrist who like doesn't deserve to die and be eaten, but he was a dickhead, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's calculated in this way where you're like, huh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, what they did with the characters is, is remarkable. Is it based on a book? I think yeah. Silence of the Lambs is based on a book. And so it's Translation to screen, very well done. Often, you know, you always hear like, oh, the book's better than the movie or whatever. I have never heard that about this. I am keen to read the book now just to see 
what changes they made and whatnot. But um, anyway, you know, on, on the filmmaking, we kind of pointed out or talked about it while watching the movie. They did a really good job of kind of hinting at stuff. Some of it's a little bit obvious, but like when she walks into the elevator and you just see the disparity between her and the men around her. And it's like that theme carries through the entire film of like the men kind of looking at her and she feeling like she's surrounded by giants that she's up against, you know, socially and physically. I haven't seen another, another movie that made me feel the position of what a woman might feel like just in the day to day of being kind of leered at and stared at in that particular way. And like I said, I know that feeling, but not obviously not to the level that you might, but I do know that feeling and I'm like yeah that feels that feels accurate that's just like uncomfortable and unsettling and you just you're waiting for it to stop and I can't think of another movie that's like given me the experience of a woman so to speak of just that kind of social situation and it makes me feel bad as a guy <laughs> <laughs> because like sometimes you you look but just like you don't realize what you're doing yeah because you just it's, like, it's all biological stuff that's just happening on it automatically like that's just you know, kind of how we're hardwired as a guy I guess I'm constantly like kind of fighting against that just because I don't want to make someone feel uncomfortable I experienced that just the other day at the gym where I was like looking at someone and then I realized they probably think I'm a creep because I've been looking too long. I should just leave. And I, and, I, and you know, that's what I did as I left because I, I didn't want to make that person feel uncomfortable. But yeah, like the movie conveyed it very effectively. It was very relatable in that sense, depending what room you walk in at what time, you feel like a piece of meat. Yeah. And it's kind of like this mountain to climb of how do you exert power while also maintaining that you are a woman and like that's just how you were born and who you are she i just felt like was bait yeah you know in a lot of senses to figure out this case um even in the end of this case there was so much about her psychology and her build just being who she was that made her the bait of this movie in so many ways and she was being used by both hannibal and her lead fbi guy in different ways and it's interesting interesting how people in power will use certain people for different tasks yeah. while also seemingly not treating them as an equal but they are useful and good at their job so yeah. I thought that dichotomy was fascinating yeah I mean her her size she's not big and she's not an intimidating person to look at right and that I think that adds a lot to her character and her vulnerability in her journey because like she can't muscle someone right and so when and towards the end of the movie when the guy is kind of following her, with the night vision goggles, which is like, I completely forgot about that until it came back. I was like, oh, whoa, that was great. Because they set it up really early in the movie and it's it was gone long enough that you forgot about it. Yeah. And then and then when they when they show it to you later, it's like, oh, they set it up. So it's like you're not looking at that late in the film going, that's bullshit because they set it up. And it makes sense that someone like that might have equipment like that. Totally. And so her being like tracked by that guy, it's like, I, I felt scared for her. Cause I'm like, what's she gonna do? She can't muscle her way over this guy if he grabs her. And so thankfully she heard that noise right at the last second and was able to, her training kicked into action right at the last second. I, the only thing I didn't like in that whole sequence was just how much noise she was making. I'm like, all your training is falling apart here. But maybe that's the point. It's just like, she's, yeah. she's coming in going, huh, 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 and I'm like, stop making so much goddamn noise like you know what I mean yeah I do know what you mean but I also think that was purposeful in the sense that there was no part of her that was trying not to be who she was which is a feminine woman sure and that played to her advantage and her disadvantage yeah. and I thought that in the way that she dressed and held herself she wasn't trying like sometimes it's it's hard not to be like maybe I do need to be more masculine in a workplace to gain respect I don't know if this was purposeful but it felt like we just have our makeup and our experiences to make us who we are and like yeah. because of that she was able to solve and do this case and figure it out i mean it's very easy to see why this is a classic instantly up there is like one of my favorite film experiences i, I wish i could like unsee that one part though near the beginning where the guy threw him, his stuff at her yeah her face. Was i was just like that's just a little wow wow the thing is it wasn't gratuitous because it informed why hannibal lecter now kills that guy because he makes the guy kill himself essentially his art is taken away and then that gives Jodie Foster something to give back to him yeah. later on and so everything has this sort of interesting circle of consequences and I, I appreciate all that everything has meaning in the movie right you know and it's like all too often you know you see a film where it's just like stuff is just happening whereas everything has an effect here there's cause and effect throughout the entire film and I thought that was just very well executed yeah it was so. disgusting but also even more so showed how it is to be like a woman yeah. 
ex- in that sort of setting yeah. and how abusive that was. Yeah. I think that it also lets you know right away what kind of movie you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. You know? Disco- it just the grossest parts of humanity. Yeah, some gross stuff is going to get in your eyes sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but solve the case anyway. Yeah, but you'll solve the case. Oh, like, oh, God dang it. Disgusting. Yeah. I would have uh, to acid wash my face. I really wonder where they went from here because I think this had two spinoffs. There was like one sequel with uh, Anthony Hopkins and then I think there was another one with Ed Norton. I can't remember. But like, if you guys want us to do a reaction to any of the subsequent chapters of this, please let us know in the comments below. I uh, would be quite keen to check it out. Do subscribe, bell icon, all notifications, vote this up. Please let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And if you're watching this on Patreon or memberships, thanks so much for supporting us here. Really appreciate y'all. I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.